Almost 90% of women have cellulite. And guess what? It's not their fault. We don't choose cellulite, but we can choose a different way to treat it. Meet Quo, Collagenase Clostridium Histolyticum, AAES, the first and only FDA-approved prescription injectable for moderate to severe cellulite in the buttocks of adult women. This non-surgical treatment is injected by an aesthetic specialist in 10 minutes or less. Individual results may vary. Do not receive if you are allergic to any collagenase or ingredients in Quo or have an infection at the treatment site. May cause serious side effects, allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis and injection site bruising. Seek medical help right away for any signs of allergic hypersensitivity. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions, if you have a bleeding condition or take medicine that prevents clotting. Most common side effects include bruising, pain, hardness, itching, redness, discoloration, swelling, and warmth at the injection site. Ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for product information. If you're ready to get to the bottom of your cellulite, learn more and find a specialist at Quo.com. Hey, and welcome to the HA Podcast. I'm Danny Sheriff, the host of this podcast, the founder of the HA Society, and an HA recovery coach who has walked wherever you currently are. This is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. I would love it if you could rate and review this podcast, five stars only, to help make this podcast easier for other women with HA to find it. And last thing, nothing from this show should be taken as medical advice. Please seek the advice of your physician. Hey. (laughs) Okay. You might be wondering, why are you releasing an episode on a Sunday? That's exciting. That's new. That's different. Yes. Yes exciting um no particular reason I'm not here to tell you about anything special um I just think that maybe I love this podcast and I might want to do a tiny incy wincy bit more um I've just been really inspired by some other podcasters that I listen to and they release episodes more than once a week and in the beginning, I was like, well, that's psychotic. Like, I, what, you know, how much more do I want to put on my plate? Um, and then I was like, all, pretty much all I do is podcast. <laughs> so why not just do more of what I'm good at, do more of what's working? And this is how I connect most with you guys. I, 100%, all my followers all the dms that i get on social media is like someone coming to find me and chat after listening to the podcast so this is how i connect most with you so i just i just am gonna maybe do some little extra ones here and there and i don't know up like record and upload them the exact day that i do it that that i record it usually i am so far in advance it's crazy town Uh, before going into maternity leave um before having the baby i had episodes scheduled all the way through till the end of september and even and so now i am i'm back on my cadence of of preparing them all month and month in advance but they're still i still have them all recorded already it's just about like editing and uploading them so i'm very on top of it that it's that's kind of like my skill set is being on top of it, I'm a project manager by trade and yeah, organization, working ahead, this whole ship is running on my shoulders. So I thought this could be some kind of candid thing I do for fun that I release in the moment. Um, yeah. And today I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about something that was on my heart. You know, that's the other reason I want to do this is like, being organized and scheduling things out in advance is great but it makes it difficult for me to be in touch with you guys always with what's on my mind in the moment so i'm gonna dive in today to a little bit of like a motivational reminder for you for your recovery journey um i talk a lot about you know getting your period back and um i do talk a lot about the mindset of it but But not as much as I would like and not as much as I know you all need because that's honestly what mostly is. So you all can, you all can read about the science as much as you want, but you got to do the hard work. And 
while you're doing the hard work, I wanted to share this reminder that when it comes to HA recovery, you're on what we call your hero's journey. I didn't invent that term. I don't know who did. People listening might know. Um, and you can let me know, actually, because I would love to remember who came up with that. But you're on your hero's journey right now. And that rings 100% true for me. Um, I would not be where I am today without going through HA recovery. And it's made me just 10 times better. We were on the HA Society community call yesterday and one of our awesome listeners, Emma, shout out to Emma, she said a quote that I really, really liked, which was, going through HA recovery is an opportunity to discover your authentic self. And it that's just 100% true. We're all trying to pick apart and get rid of this identity that we've created around our ourselves, you know, being the fit one, being the healthy one, being the runner, being the weightlifter, whatever it is for you. And un- unpacking that, finding out who you really, really are, what, to, you know, what you're really passionate about. And if it is those things, discovering how you can get back to balance and how you can get back to yourself so that you don't overdo it next time once you recover and slip back into HA and all that good stuff. You know, HA isn't something that has just been put in your way to annoy you and throw your life off track. So once you have overcome it, you can get right back to where you were before. The point is to change. It's not a game of snakes and ladders that although you've had a large setback, right? You've gotten, you've hit the snake and you've gone all the way down to the bottom of the board. And, you know, fun fact, since moving to America, I've discovered over here, they call it slides and ladders. So maybe snakes and ladders is just an Australian thing because, of course, we would call it snakes. Um, But I digress. Regardless of the huge setback of sliding down the snake or the slide, you'll still be on the same path of glory towards the end, towards the finish line that you were always on. It. That's not how it works. It's not like that. It's. It's in AJ has appeared in your way because your life was not on track and you were not slowing down at all to recalibrate it. So let me let me rephrase because I totally got off track with the whole snakes and ladders fun fact. Okay, imagine a game of snakes and ladders. And you're really just following one path and you hit a snake and you slide back down and you keep going on the path. And it's just annoying because you really want to win. But a, a lot of us kind of see our recovery that way, right? We're just, we're going on this path and there's all these temptations, comments from others, stresses, anxieties. They're the snakes that make us slide back down the path. And when something good happens, something motivating, or you get your period back, whatever, um, you know, you you get to go up a ladder, you get to skip a bunch of steps. It can really feel that way. Um, and so that kind of makes it seem like the setbacks, the challenges are just in your way for the sake of like being in your way for the sake of obstacles. And I just don't, I really like that analogy, but I don't, I think it's hundred percent true, right? Because, you know, HA has not like these temptations, these challenges, these struggles, HA itself, it has appeared in your path because your life was not on track and you were not slowing down and trying to course correct, you know, so your HA journey is here to help you. Those challenges are not in your way to hinder you on your path to success, right? That comment from a person that was hurtful is not just in your way to make things challenging. That, um, you know, moment that you saw a photo of yourself and you are not happy with your body it didn't just happen to upset you and make these things more difficult. Whatever it is for you, you know, if you... You just need to adjust your perspective a little bit here. HA is a sign that things need changing. And if you're not going to make those changes willingly, your body's going to force you to do it. So recovery, it should be hard. 
you should now be in a space of trying things that are uncomfortable and make you scared in the pursuit of your best life, as they say. And any kind of similar obsessive behavior feels safe. It's keeping you from growth and the opportunity to fail at things and then overcome them. So if we go back to our snakes and ladders analogy, every time you land on a snake and you slide backwards, it's not just to piss you off. It's because you still have some kind of behavior that's making, that's going to make long-term recovery difficult. And if you just get to skip over that on your way to recovery, get your period back without having to address any of those issues like lower self-esteem, like, you know, obsessive exercise, it's going to keep you from growth, the opportunity to fail at things and then overcome them. Okay. So every time you fail, every time you hit a snake, every time something gets to you and it makes you go backwards a little bit, it's an opportunity to fail and overcome it and get stronger as a person. So this is just a piece PSA. Yeah. PSA public service announcement on my not public service platform to remind you that whatever discomfort resent or even curiosity or harboring about your HA. It's there for a reason and you should lean into it. So try new things, anything, and see where this journey that you're on, full of ups and downs, brings you. Because I promise that if you give it a chance, you will have that happy ending. This is your hero's journey. The obstacles are opportunities, not just annoyances. The more of them you have to deal with, the more you're going to grow. The less someone else has to deal with, the less they're going to grow. So yeah, that's it for me. This was fun. Let me know what you think. Um, If me just kind of like freestyle ranting and uploading things is annoying, I won't do it. If it's fun, I will keep doing it. It was fun for me. Um, Come and chat come and chat with me because unfortunately podcasts aren't two ways so I would love to hear from you what you want to hear about what you want podcast episodes on all that kind of good stuff all right guys I'll talk to you next time I know I said I don't have an announcement but I actually maybe do sorry it's not even 7 a.m yet um but I'm actually sitting down at my computer look I have like something awkward to tell you (laughs) I am going back on what I said at the very end of well, somewhere in July that um, the AJ Society is going to be open for good. I gave it a shot. I don't like it. I really don't like it very much. Um, it's really difficult for me to juggle new people and existing people. And what I've always done in the past is opened once a month for just a few days so I can focus on welcoming and getting to know the new members. And then I can close it and I can focus on all of the women that are in the group and their recovery and their stories. And being open all of the time um, was just difficult. So I am closing it again. I'm putting a wait list back up. And I think I'm also going to change how I um, like open each month too. So I used to open once a month on the new moon. But I think at this stage, I'm actually going to invite people sort of one by one off the list to join. So if you're on the wait list, just make sure my emails aren't going to spam because yeah. And anyway, there's no wait list, not even up yet. So just don't even worry about that. Ignore that. Um, I, cause I still, there's a bunch of things I need to put in place technology wise to make that happen again. So I'm working on that kind of over this next week. And as soon as it's ready, I'm going to just put it up. So if you want to get in before I put it up and so that you don't have to wait in the queue, please do go to the hasociety.com forward slash join. Come and join us in there now before the wait list goes back up. Yeah. Okay. That's it for me. All right. Bye. (laughs) Bundling home and car insurance with Geico is so easy. Your neighbors are probably already doing it, but who? 
They may drop little hints like... Beautiful day out. Even more beautiful since we saved by bundling our home and car insurance with GEICO. Or... Yard work is hard. Much harder than bundling with GEICO, which was easy. Or it may be even subtler, like... Speaking of burgers, we bundled our home and car insurance with GEICO and saved a bunch of money. Bundling is easy with GEICO. Just ask your neighbors. And now it's GEICO's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Before you ride, make sure your mirrors are clean and adjusted properly. And if you're going on a group ride, make sure the lead biker knows where they're going. Uh, Ed, quick question. Where are you taking us? Oh, I have no idea. What, am I the leader? <laughs> because I was uh, following that dude with the red helmet. Where, Where is he? And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, Geico could save you 15% or more.